boys and girls. Welcome to my review of the 35 GE. And like with any new model, this is a journey that I'm rather jittery about. I'm that excited. You know, I'm all trembly and stuff. It's always fantastic to start the new model. And uh, obviously there's a lot of stuff that needs to happen. You see the blue one on the screen there. That's what we are building. Now, um, when they get set up and drawn by my designer, old Chris there in uh, Graf Renet, um, obviously he works off scale drawings and we are sitting with um, fixed motor blocks. So there's a lot of stuff that needs to be slightly adapted and moved and stuff. Now, normally it's not a problem because I work with the much bigger locos. On the 35 GM, there was no problems because that one just sucked everything up. You chucked at it. However, this little monster, if I remember right, I'm under correction here. Oaks must help me right. But I've read somewhere that this was the shortest loco ever to feature a Coco setup. Three axle, three axle. All right. And that, my dear friends, causes a lot of problems for the simple reason that you need to fit everything in underneath there. And also, if you look at that photo up top there and you look at the size of the diesel tank, uh, yes, the speakers I normally use um, don't even remotely go in there. But more about that later. Okay, so dudes, let's build a loco. Why? Because we can. Okay, so I got the chassis. Yeah. And, okay, first thing off, we, because the motor blocks are different, we don't know where the pivots are going to be. You need to um, find the pivots. So I went to the scale drawings, configured it to that motor block there, that size and where the pivot sits here. And you can see this whole mess going on here because they were too high we used the block we normally use and on the ge everything just drops so yeah there's that they brought me the new blocks tonight and they work perfectly okay now so as you can see yeah this is why the first one always stays with me because there will be stuff ups um the first pivot was there wasn't right that pivot was there very very close but i got it right um i'll show you now what the problem is with this chassis um and how careful you got to be to get everything exactly right so let's not stuff around i'm gonna move you to where the muck to the track here let me just get everything out the way i actually should have done this first but hey you know, we like family, man. How about that? All right, so there we go. So there we have our two motor blocks. So let's pack it. While we, uh, let's pack it. If not, why not? Now, as you guys know, I do a metal chassis underneath. Now, this one I had to cut, which was a damn nightmare because it wouldn't fit on there. So on the next one, I'll have to make a different plan there. But that's just all development. Let's see how good I am with spacing of this. Look, I'm going to be in the screen now, so don't just, just bear with me. Right. So there we have it. Now, why I had to cut the chest, you can see that the right idea has to be perfect. And now this is the problem with that small little tank. You see that gap there? That's all we have to turn in. Now I've chased it through a two point, the chassis as it's standing yet, through a 2.3 meter radius, radius five LGB point, and it takes it. So that's basically, that's worst case scenario for me. I won't go under um, radius five. The guys that want to buy Cape Gauge one have got radius two and radius three bends. Boys, 
I cannot help you. I mean, I can't alter a model that it looks like um, a piece of crap just to take the corner. I can't. It's got to be right. So that wheelbase is now exactly right. All right, so let's pack a thing on you. Now, okay, I've got to warn you that... Um, let's go out a bit so we can get the whole thing in. Um, let's do it like that. And like that. And you can see the whole thing. I have sanded some of it. You will see that there's a, a slight difference in color where I've done and where I haven't done. Okay, and I have marked out on the chassis more or less where the gap should sit. So let's pack it. I mean, if not, why not? Right, boom, nose. Nose sits there. Happiness. Okay, cab. I've sanded. I've sanded the cab with uh, 120 grit. So this is like a mango pit. It's heavy, like, uh, uh, I guess a nun would be. Um, but yeah, it's very rough still. That's only the first, but there's no print lines. This is why I clad. You can see now that there's no print lines on this thing. It is smooth. Um, once I get over it with the uh, 400 and 600, this will be, you can actually polish this. They will be that clean. All right. Okay. So let's put the cab on. Boomy boom. There we go. There we go. Right. This I haven't seen it. Now that is still with print lines. You see there. Now this will be sanded also with a, with a 120. And then, you see, there's nothing on it. So I can sand it nicely. And then I'll do all the add-ons later. All right. Okay, so let's put this on there. Rikas, hang on, hang on. Do it with two hands. The Oaks will wait for you, man. The Oaks will wait for you. Right, so there we have a cab. Boomy boom, cab with a roof. Dun, 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 dun. Right, first dynamic brake. Now, this specific one is the 35 O, which was the first series. And they came either like this, okay, and I will do this as an option on the model when it comes out, that you can have either the, the saddle filter or no saddle filter. Then it just gets a plate up top here that we can print separately. It is on the SDL. All right. But this one I'm going to build with a hood on. Look, it gets some detail there. There's a thing running through there. And this is something at the front there. You can see there. That I've all got. That that will be stuck on later. Right, so there we have it. We're at the uh, dynamic break. Now the arse end of the thing is this here which is, thank God, it was printed in one piece. I have to suck all the stuff. 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 <laughs> That's stupid language. And this is the arse end. Now, this is also resin. You can see the nice detail on it and that there's very, very little work to be done on it. So this is just goes into my ultrasonic bath and I clean it nicely and wherever I need to, I just sand it quickly and boomy boom. Okay, so, right, that goes at the back there. Cool. Okay, and there, my dear friends, we have a loco. Right. Now, okay, as you can see, I want to weather this one. I'm going to do the same blue as the other one. So, I want to weather it like the picture showed us. So, the battery boxes comes there, there somewhere, like that, all right, and that is basically that, there we have a loco, now, normally what determines if a model is going to be brilliant or mediocre is the, the, the detail on the doors, that's very important. Um, I will get to that now. First things first. 
Now you ook see that diesel tank there. Now if you look at Droymoer over there, and that diesel tank, in there I've got a 80 mil 35 watt FRS8 Visathon. I don't use anything else than Visathon. They're absolutely brutal speakers. And now uh, we have this little tank. So what the hell do you put in there? So, I bought a couple of these. This, as you can see, is a FRS 58. It's a 50 mil speaker. Man, it's beautiful. And you can see by the size of the cone, this thing will pump, I think. Look, the jury is out. We'll see when we put the sound file in what it does. But I've checked inside. Look at that. It just slides in there. Absolutely no problem. I think that that will do the trick. If it doesn't, we put another bloody one inside. And then that'd be the end of that. Okay, now, the most important thing. Like I said, what makes a good bottle is all the detail that has to be stuck on there now. Now I want to show you something. This is the cladding that goes over the body. Now this one, yeah. You see there with the rivets? Resin goes into the bath. Not a single mark on it. That goes over the back there now, right? So we work from there to the front. I'm not too sure how it goes in there, but there's some very, very pretty doors here. Now this one, I think, sits somewhere there sideways. Look at the detail on that. Pretty, eh? Very, very pretty. Okay. And this is a normal door. Now, what I want to show you is, have a very good look at the door handle. You see the door handles in there? Hey, 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 hey. That's why we print these things in resin. Because in no filament are you going to get that sort of detail. Uh, where is it focusing? There. You can see, pretty. Very, very pretty. And then there's a couple of other ones. Um, you know, when I still build these things by hand, I think the most difficult thing on earth to build are like press formed vents. Yeah, you can suckle. With that stuff, you can suckle the whole day. Um, so there, with printing, boom, very easy. Right, so that's a door that comes somewhere. I have, I think, this might be the one at the front here, somewhere there. It'll sit there, yeah. And then you have these also with a long, long row of vents. That one I know goes there. Okay. I haven't got the top one. She's still busy printing that. Um... And this one is the big one at the back there. And this is white. It comes white, y'all. So that looks like that. That sits there. And then the one with a vent. Not too sure where the hell this one goes. I think that might be the first door at the back before the opening. I think that's the first door there. If, if, I, if I look at it, I think that's the one. I'm not too sure. But anyway, I will sort that out. And then the rest is just all the smaller doors. Zip, zip, zip. This goes over the battery box there. It sits right there. But check how pretty the doors are. And now uh, back at the oil filter housing by the compressor or expressor, uh, a lot of guys make the mistake with this little baby. That thing there was never upright. It sat like that. You see, it's at an angle. Yeah, so if it sits like that, it actually goes slightly away to the top. It's not, it's not symmetrical. I hope you can see that way. Let me show you like that. Now that's better. See there, it doesn't sit straight sits at an angle so uh, yes i think that's going to be very very nice and the rest is just more doors and cover plates and dooby 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 doop 
other thing that happened with these GEs were, well, with all the trains actually, and I've sent the STL to Karl at Plain Getrain. He is going to etch me some brass window um, frames that we will incorporate later on the production models um, to see how that works. But let me show you. The Don't chuck the stuff away because be very careful. The rest of the little bag of surprises here. There is the right hand side. Now this is the actual window frame. And they came out so pretty, eh? Um, let me show you. Close, up close and personal. Look at that. See. So that gets stuck on there now. And you have your aluminium door, your aluminium window frame. And all the window frames here, their actual rubber is um, now separately printed. So I can actually fit the windows elsewhere, make sure that they fit nicely and they're nice and clean, and then just slide them in and glue them. You can also paint them separately. Here's some shocks. Ding, ding, ding. I'm going to use in some of the other side frames. And basically that, my friends, is the story. Now, just to, does that thing have to do this now? Basically, the story with this speaker also that I like. All the other speakers that's this size are 2 watts, 3 watt, and so, and they're 4 ohm. This is an 8 ohm, 10 watt speaker, maximum 12 watt. I've got a funny feeling that this thing is going to surprise us and make a hell of a racket in there. I've got a funny feeling. So, yes, dudes, there we have a train. Obviously, now I'll need to do all the plumbing and stuff underneath. The new um, vacuum hoses came. It's also in here. Because uh, this is a solid one-piece vacuum hose. All right. Remember I showed you the other night on the 34? There's actually my 34's little insert on the side side of the cab. Um, I must just remember it's there. Boom, boom. And then we'll just dress her up. What is specifically nice, let me take you out here, that, that I absolutely love about this train, is the... is the... the pilot. Hey? Check how nice that pilot is, that jocks of the weather. Such a nice pilot, and check how nice and low it is. It's perfect, man. Absolutely perfect. That's a very nice pilot. So, there is our train. A little, a little, I, I call it pucky. It's a pucky. So, once the air horns and all the stuff's on, and the top doors, it's got the um, hinges and stuff, I think this will be a very, very pretty little train. And from experience, I know, with a short wheelbase like that, man, oh man, it's going to pull. I know it will pull. And there's enough space because of the big overhangs for nicely doing the couplers, doing the sandpipes. Eh. There we go. Pretty, eh? And, you know, this is a quintessential South African loco. Now, if we do it like that, I think that... Um, we just might have a very pretty logo. Yes, I'm going to wear it exactly like this one. Um, I'm somewhere going to do the same fleet number, 35065. I'll get the decals, um, get the, my other half to print them for me tomorrow. So we have them. And uh, boom. Yeah, and the one thing I haven't got still, which also throws you now, is the steps here, obviously. That's still getting printed. That makes it look like a bit like a pregnant fairy. Because there's these big open holes here, but you know, the steps will normally fill that up. There's a nice overview. Right, 20 minutes in second London. Okay, guys, that's basically it. Now you've built a loco. <laughs> you can go do it yourself. All right, dudes, we speak later. Good, Jelle Ernst, tot ziens.